So in the last class, we had discussed about uh, Mahasankhikaj. So we had discussed about the general introduction of uh, our Mahasankhikaj. So today we are going to discuss about some of the salient features of uh, Mahasankhikaj. We have already discussed that how Mahasankhikaj were uh, developed in the Second Buddhist Council and why this uh, Mahasankhikaj are called as Mahasankhikaj because more than 700 persons participated in another council which defected from the Second Buddhist Council. But some of the teachings of the Buddha which are accepted in the First Buddhist Council by under the chairmanship of Mahaskasyap Astavir they also accepted some of the salient features of all these things. But some of the things which were not acceptable to Mahasangika. So we'll discuss the, that how Swan Chuang also discusses in his memoirs or how the travels of Swan Chuang discuss about the Mahasangika in his uh, collections of the, this and the main point was that uh, they rejected some of the persons of uh, which were compiled in the first Buddhist council so Mahasankhikaj rejected uh, Parivar which was accepted as the fifth book of uh, of Binay Pitaka also, Mahasankhika did not accept the Abhidhamma, that is the seven text of Abhidhamma Pitaka. And uh, there are some texts of uh, Kuddak Nikaya, like Patisambhidhamag, Niddesa, Chul Niddesa, or Mahanidesa, and some of the parts of the Jatikas, which were not accepted by Mahasankhika. They accepted other uh, texts of First Buddhist Council and Second Buddhist Council, but uh, they did not accept the uh, some of the portions of the Bine, like Parivar or a whole seven text of uh, uh, Abhidhamma Pitaka, they did not accept uh, because they are saying that it is not uh, utterance of the uh, Lord Buddha. And some of the texts like Patisambhidamag, Niddesa, Chuddhidesa or Mahanidesa, of the Kudak Nikai and some of the parts of the Jatakaj, we are having 550 Jatakaj, but some of the portions of the Jatakaj were not accepted by Mahasangikaj. And we also know that Parivar is the uh, text of the Binay Pitaka, which gives the appendix or index of all the rules and regulations available in our uh, Parajika and Pachitya. So they did not uh, accept it. And it was also compiled by a single mog. So Mahasankikas do not accept this piece. And we are quite aware that in the Third Buddhist Council, under the chairmanship of Mogliputta Thera, uh, the Kathavatthu was compiled and the whole seven text of uh, Abhidhamma Pitaka was also first of all named in First Buddhist Council. See, they do not, uh, Mahasangikaj do not accept the teachings of the Abhidhamma or seven text of the Abhidhamma. <clears throat> Even nowadays also, in not in Theravadins, but in other sects also, this Patisambhidhamag uh, are not accepted, or Nidhes, they are not accepted as a teachings of the Buddha also. So opinion differs as to that, whether they are uh, direct teachings of the Buddha or whether they are authentic teachings of the Buddha or not. So still, there are some debates also. So 
Mahasanghikas claim that the texts are additional and are not included in the canonical collections of the Mahasanghikas. Mahasanghikas have also Vinayapitaka, Sutipitaka and Abhidhamma Pitaka, but they do not have these seven texts of Abhidhamma, Parivar of Vinay, and some of the parts of the Jatakas, as well as Patisambhidhamag and the Niddes, Chul Niddes and Mahaniddes, these are not available in the collections of our Mahasanghikas. They have also three Pitaka also. They compiled a fresh the text of Dhamma and Binay and included those texts only which have been rejected by the in Mahakasap Council by the Mahasanghikas. So still in the first Buddhist council, Mahaka, there were some opponents and they did not accept a whole proceedings of the first Buddhist council. And we are also quite aware that there was a Thir named as a Purana who did not accept all the teachings of the Buddha, which were compiled in the first Buddhist council under the chairmanship of Mahakasapa. So they, that was the main division of our Sangha. And this was... A, a, divided into Theravada and Mahasankhika. And we are also that by the time of the Third Buddhist Council, altogether there were 18 schools or 18 thoughts, Buddhist thoughts by 3rd century AD, BC, uh, at the time of the Third Buddhist Council. And 11 were belonging to the Theravadins and 7 were belonging to our Mahasankhika. So this uh, compilation of uh, this uh, Mahasanghikas in the form of the teachings of the Buddha, they are called as Acharya Vada. That uh, a school which uh, talks about the Acharya and they are distinguished from the Theravadins compiled in the, third, uh, in the first Buddhist council. So, Wen Chang also records in his memoirs that Mahasanghika had a complete canon of their own. And we know that in the Third Buddhist Council, we, Vinay uh, Pitak, Sut Pitak, and Abhidhamma Pitak was first of all classified as the teachings of the Buddha, collections of the teachings of the Buddha. So, uh, Yuan Chuang, who came here in the 7th century AD, and he writes that uh, there will complete canon for the Mahasanghikas also. And uh, Binay of the Mahasanghikas, according to our uh, Yuan Chuang or Suan Chuang, was the same as compiled at the Mahakasap Council. Further, he also writes in his uh, memoirs that uh, Abhidhamma, with, uh, he studies the text of uh, Abhidhamma with uh, two monks of the south uh, named as Dhanakataka, the place where the, uh, the, these two monks were belonging. Further, uh, uh, Swanchang also writes that he carried more than 657 Sanskrit texts or works from India back to China and translated them into Chinese under the orders of King Emperor there at that time. So among them, they were, and out of the 657 works or the text which uh, our Swan Chang carried from India and he, they were translated into Chinese by the order of the emperor. There were more than uh, nine, 15 texts which were belonging to our Mahasanghikas. So there were Maha, 15 texts which were uh, belonging or from the compilation of the Mahasanghikas. 
on especially on the sutra binay and uh, avidharm still earlier before our swain chain fahyan had also come to india and they, they had also taken away a complete transcript of the binay of the mahasanghikas from patliputra to render it to chinese also so if you go through the binan geo catalog of uh, tibetan tripitaka or chinese tripitaka we will find that there were two mahasanghikas binay text the bhikshu binay and the bhikshu binay so these are available in binan geo catalog of uh, our tibetan tibetan tripitaka or chinese tripitaka so these are available there and these texts were belonging to especially mahasanghikas so the original work of mahasanghika sect available to us is the mahavastu which is called as a translation of our mahavag of the theravadins or mahavastu avadan also it is called as mahavastu so it is the first book of the binay pitak of lokkatar vadins of the mahasanghikas so mahasanghikas school we are having two seven uh, uh, schools also so one of the schools were lokkatar vadins lokkatar vadins were uh, thinking themselves that uh, buddhism uh, you can say a super designated uh, personality and uh, he is beyond of the lok uh, buddha so uh, in that way lokottar vadins uh, uh, school developed and uh, buddha all the buddhas or you can say the, uh, the persons who have got enlightenment are lokottar supra mundain are connected and connected they externally with the worldly life so this uh, conception of this buddha contributed much to the growth of mahayana philosophy so this lokottar vadins were the persons who developed the our philosophy related with mahayana buddhism so this uh, and this lokottar vadins and this uh, concept uh, conception of the buddha as a supra mundane personality it gives the history of the formation of the sangh and the first karvansa also it discusses about the that how dhamchak pavatan sut was priest at sarnath and who were the persons who were converted into the sangh first of all so it also discusses in a very detailed manner mahavastu if you go through the mahavag and mahavastu you, we find some of the Uh, similarities between the uh, description of the turning of the will of law or dhamchak pavartana sutta priest by the buddha and how the uh, persons were converted into the uh, our sangha so there are some of the inscriptions also which provide the evidence of the mahasanghika canon also that is the tipitaka in the amravati inscriptions of the nagarjun kunda uh, belongs to andhra pradesh terms like binay dhar maha binay dhar and samjukta bhanak have been used for the monks and the nuns and in the same way in the nagarjun kunda inscription which bears the word like dig madhyam then oshak vachanam dik madhyam nikay dharesu so these are some of the terms they are available in nagarjun kunda inscriptions also so these evidences show that canon of the mahasanghikas was in the existence at least as early as the first century ad so this is the beginning of our mahayan buddhism and we see that how after the second buddhist council there were 
there was a schism and how mass ankhika occurred. But by the first century AD, the existence of the, you can say, Mahasangikas are available and inscriptions, uh, evidences prove it uh, about this. There is another uh, a scholar, Binit Dev, who belongs to 8th century AD. The Mahasangikas wrote their uh, uh, teachings of the Buddha in Prakirt and uh, we are quite aware that Pali was the language for the Theravadins. But uh, here Mahasanthikas adopted uh, our uh, Prakirt medium of uh, our uh, writing of the text. So all the Mahas text of the canon were uh, of the Mahasangikas were written in Prakirt. There is one great scholar, Chomadi Koro also, who has written Tibetan Tripitak also. And he also states that the Sutra on the Emancipation of the Mahasangikas was written in a corrupt dialect. It is not a Prakirt, not a Magati, not a Pali, but it is in a corrupt, uh, you can say, Prakirt. So there are some scholars who also hold that literature of this school was in Prakirt. So Mahavastu, as we have already seen, that it is the text of his discussion about the life history of the Buddha after the Dham Chakka Pavartana, Pavartana at Rishi Patanamirgadav Saranath. So it is also in the mixed Sanskrit Mahavastu, not in the Prakrit, not in the uh, Magadhi or Pali, but the language which is called as Buddhist hybrid Sanskrit. It is not complete Sanskrit because the form of the Sanskrit, what we are having, when Astadhyayi was composed by Asar Panani in the 5th century AD, then the exact uh, or uh, we are having the Sanskrit before the this fifth century AD in the first century AD whatever we are having the text in Sanskrit this is called as Buddhist hybrid Sanskrit BHS some of the scholars uh, designate it Sankar or mixed Sanskrit and uh, after uh, exertion he has also written a grammar of the Buddhist hybrid Sanskrit, as well as he has also written a dictionary on Buddhist hybrid Sanskrit. And if we, this Buddhist hybrid Sanskrit discusses about the Mahasankhikaj schools of the thought related with the teachings of the Buddha. So this is the one of the things we, which we find in comparison with our uh, Astavirvadins. But again, in the second century after the Buddha death, Mahasangika sect was split into two divisions, Lukuttor Vadins and Ek Behwarik. So there are two schools which were developed. And later on also we are having Gokulikaj, Bahusrutiyaj, and Pragyapti Vad. And shortly afterwards appeared as a Sal school also. So altogether there were seven schools which were developed after the second century AD, after the Mahapandiban of the Buddha we are having. There is another school which is known as Chetikaj. Chetikaj means the Chetya the stupas, were so-called because their cult of the Chetya shrines. They are belonging to the Chetya shrine. So both of them paved for the way, way of Mahayana Buddhism or Mahayanism. There was another school which is called as Sailaj. They derived their name from the hills. Sail means the Parvat or mountain. So this uh, name of the Sela uh, derived their name uh, from a mountain and uh, they are also the 
called Andhakaj also. And Andhakaj were uh, belonging to the South India, especially Andhra Pradesh. And uh, in Ceylon Chronicles also, like Deepavans and Mahavans, we are having the references of this Andhakaj. So they, these Andhakaj are also discussed in the commentary of the Kathavattu. Uh, um, Kathavattu is a text of the Avidhamma Pitaka of Theravadins. So it also discusses about the Andhakaj and how does it differs from the Theravadins. So the Pali commentary, like this our uh, Kathavattu Atkatha, it mentions about that both the Chetavadins and the Andhakaj schools were merely names, remote provincial, standing for some ten doctrines. Among the sections in which the Mahasanghikas were divided, the Chetakaj and Sel schools were the most prominent and had a great influence in the South also. So in the earlier, we are having evidences that Mahasanghikas could not make much head away. They could not they advance in a proper manner because of the strong opposition of the Orthodox monks, especially the Theravadins in Sri Lanka, Myanmar, and in Thailand. So they could not prosper and they could not uh, develop uh, their uh, canon or Tipitaka, Binay Pitaka, Sutta Pitaka, and Arvidamba Pitaka. Because in most of the our Sri uh, Theravadin country, like uh, Sri Lanka, Myanmar, or uh, Sri uh, Thailand, they were uh, a strong uh, propounders of the Theravad Buddhism. So Mahasanghikas, the concept uh, which were taken away by the Bhaiyan, Swanchang, in their uh, translations uh, of the original text, uh, which were taken away by our uh, Swanchang and Fahiyan, they were translated into Chinese. So these texts are available, and from there, they developed their own theories. So they have their own channel. So further, Swanchang also mentions uh, that the majority of the inferior that is the, our Theravadins at Patliputra began the Mahasanghika school. In the 7th century AD, there was another Chinese traveler known as It Singh. He also states that he found the Mahasanghikas in Magadha central India. A few in Lat, that is the Gujarat in the present time, and Sindhu western India that is the Jammu Kashmir area, and a few in northern, southern, and eastern India. So this Mathura line, if you go through the uh, Indian Museum, uh, we are having one uh, uh, Mathura line. So in, there is an inscription on this Mathura line, which records that a teacher named Buddha was given a gift so that uh, he might teach the Mahasankhikas. So this is the earlier epigraphic evidence that the Mahasankhika sect exists. So we are having so many references about the Mahasankhikas. So in the Afghanistan also, in some of the places, there are some relics of the Buddha, which were presented to the teachers of the Mahasanghikas by one Kamal Gullia during the reign of Uviska. So this is the one of the references we are having. And uh, also Swan Chuang also writes uh, that uh, he found three monasteries belonging to the Mahasanghikas in uh, Afghanistan. And uh, he and the existence of these three maha monasteries or the Mahavihar 
of the Mahasanghikas proves that this sect was popular in Northwest, especially Kashmir and uh, Northwest, that is the Afghanistan area. That is why we are having so many manuscripts also in our uh, Sanskrit uh, language, uh, especially Buddhist hybrid Sanskrit, not uh, complete pure Sanskrit, but uh, Buddhist hybrid Sanskrit. Uh, and the scripts are different. So this is the, even in the Mumbai, there is a place of Karle. And in Karle, there is a cave also. And in the cave, there is a record of the gift of the village as also of nine celled hall to the adherents of the school of Mahasanghika. So this statement also proves that in the western part of India, there were a strong hold of Mahasanghikas. So it, uh, Mahasanghikas had a center at Karle of the Mumbai and exercised the influence over the people of the West. However, we cannot uh, claim very much, uh, but it can be presumed that uh, they were not confined to Magad alone, but uh, spread over uh, the northern and western part of India and had adherents scattered all over the country. So further it can be said that this was not true, the branches of this sect which were concentrated only in the south, in the form of Andhakaj, because we are having the inscriptions at the Amravati and Nagarjun Kunda, which mentions the Hangi or Ayer Hagan, the Chetikaj, Chetvadik, the Maha Van Seliyan or Upper Maha Van Seliya and Pubaka. So these are, we are having some of the references like this. Now we are talking about that, what are the general doctrines of our Mahasanghikas? So the general doctrine of Mahasanghikas are mainly with the, available in the Kathavatu text, which is the fifth book of Abhidhamma Pitaka of Theravadins. And this kath in um, Sanskrit Buddhist hybrid text like Mahavastu and some of the works of our uh, Acharya Vasumitra, Bhabya and Brititi. So these the some of the doctrines of uh, Mahasanghikas have been discussed there. Mahasanghikas, like Theravadins, accepted the cardinal principles of the Buddhism and were in this regard not different from them. They were also having the Four Noble Truth, Eightfold Path, Law of Dependent Originations, Law of Karma and Rebirth. So they all are available in Mahasanghikas. So the main fundamental teachings of the Mahasanghikas are the Four Noble Truth, Eightfold Path, Non-Existence of the Soul, which also Theravadins do not accept it. The theory of the Karma, theory of the Pratitya Samudhapada, and the 37 factors of enlightenment and the gradual stages of the spiritual advancement, namely Sota, Panna, Sagda, Gami, Anagami, and Arthat, these four stages of spiritual advancement or getting a state of Arhat Kud or Arhat Sip. So, according to the uh, Mahasanghika, it is also said that the Buddha is the Lokottara that is the supramundane and they all the buddhas they do not have any asrava because asrava dharmas are intoxicants like kamasav bhavasav dithyasav and abhijasav but here in through the mahasanghikas it is said that all the Buddhas have no Sastra Dharmas. 
और डिफाइल्ड एलिमेंट्स देयर बडीज देयर लेंथ एंड अदर थिंग्स फर्दर इट इज आल्सो सेड दैट दे नाइदर स्लिप और ड्रीम about the buddha it is said that and they are self possessed and always in a state of samadhi meditation all buddhas do not accept do not preach by name they understand everything in moment ek chhandak chit and until they attain parinirvana the buddha possesses the chai gyan knowledge that is the knowledge of the destruction or the decaying and anuttapada gyan that is the knowledge of the non origination so it can be summarized that everything concerning the, the buddha is transcendental that is the lokottar transcendental means it doesn't belong to the loka but it is transcendental beyond of the loka also and mahasankhik conception of the buddha contributed to the growth of later trikaya theory there are three types of uh, kaya theory in mahayana buddhism nirvana kaya sambhog kaya and buddha kaya so these three kaya concepts were developed in our, um, our mahasankhika in the later mahasankhika conception so this lokottarvadins uh, had a concept of supramundan so further it is that mahasangikas conceived of the buddha directly and gave rise to the conception of the bodhisattva so innumerable uh, conception of the bodhisattva were also emerged by this time and it was the mahasangikas who had a conception of the our uh, this uh, bodhisattva and bodhisattvas are also supra mundane according to mahasangika and they do not pass through the four embryonic stages of ordinary beings so it is said that the all the buddhas or the bodhisattvas they do not take birth through the birth canal of human being but they enter into the body and then they come out from the body but they do not come out from the birth canal of uh, human being so this is the conception because they are called as and they come to the earth only for the benefit of all the classes of sentient beings they are born of their own free will in any form of the existence they choose all these conceptions led to the deification of the buddha and bodhisattvas so we'll discuss in the next class regarding the how there were five points of the mahadev and how he talks about the arhathood according to the mahasanghikas so in the next class we will discuss in a detail manner about the five uh, points which were raised by the mahadev related with the conception of arhat or how a person can get arhat hood so we will discuss in the next class if you have any question you can ask Thank you, Professor. I don't have any question. So, otherwise, we we have still time. We can pursue for this uh, Mahadev question also, if you have time. Otherwise, we can discuss in the next class in a detailed manner. okay we'll discuss if you have any question you can ask otherwise you will discuss in the next class okay okay yeah thank you very much uh, tiko you, do you have any question or uh, thank you very or... much i i have no question okay rahul you do not have 
Yes, yes, Professor. Uh, okay, okay. So, <laughs> see you again. Uh, in the next week, we will see you again. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Uh, Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. Uh, take care. Good night. Good night.